Episode 164, The Seventh Juror. The football field was completely transformed. The stage in the middle of the field was decorated with lights and colorful banners hung from the bleachers. Students had to squeeze next to each other to sit down. Everyone sat in rows according to their class. They all stared at the stage, waiting for something to happen. A middle-aged woman made her way to the mic in the center of the stage. A hush fell upon the crowd. How are we feeling tonight, Otis? Hi! She exclaimed enthusiastically. Whoops and cheers issued from the crowd. There were four hosts in total, two men and two women. Each one took turns applauding the efforts of all the contestants and whipping the crowd into an uproar. Their amplified voices boomed across the field. After the hosts finished with opening remarks, they began to introduce special guests and tonight's jury. There were about ten guests who had come to support the school for this occasion, mainly local politicians and businessmen. The jury was composed of seven members, Mr. Turkle, the principal, five board members, and a mystery person who had yet to be revealed. When it came time to introduce this last member of the jury, the host beamed. He was a squat man who was sweating under the heat of the lights. And I'm sure you're all curious to know who the seventh member of our jury is. I am pleased to introduce you to him now. The host looked over his shoulder at the stairs. When he saw a man walk over to the steps, he turned back to the crowd. Let's give our warmest Otis welcome to Mr. Arthur Wiles. He began to clap enthusiastically, and the audience in the bleachers followed suit. Arthur's tall figure emerged on stage. He took slow and deliberate steps towards the microphone. As he approached, the guest and other judges, who had been sitting at a table on the edge of the stage, all stood up out of respect. Mr. Turkle approached Mr. Wiles with an outstretched hand. He was eager to please. As Mr. Wiles shook his hand, Mr. Turkle beamed with delight. All the students in the bleachers were staring at the stage with curiosity and admiration. Everyone recognized the name Arthur Wiles. He was a very prominent figure in the area. He was the type of person that their parents talked about at the dinner table. And there he was, at Otis High. Mr. Wiles took his seat on the panel. Now, the jury was complete. Some of the distinguished guests shifted in their chairs uneasily. They weren't expecting to share the stage with someone like Mr. Wiles. It was a bit nerve-wracking. They all did their best to sit up straight and look like they belonged. The school board members had invited Mr. Wiles as a mere formality, without any expectation that he would actually agree to participate. They knew that he rarely attended such events. It had been a huge shock to the staff when he actually accepted the invitation. I can't believe he's here, a girl in the front row whispered to her classmates. He didn't even go to Brockway when they asked. The administration at Otis High thought that it was the school that attracted Mr. Wiles' attention. They had no idea that he'd actually come to see one student in particular. Mr. Wiles looked at the program for the event. The familiar name on it made him smile. You silly boy, he thought. I'll have to deliver on my promise this time. Everyone on the judges' panel seemed to be in a good mood now. Their initial nerves had started to settle, and all of their attention was now turned toward engaging Mr. Wiles in conversation. Aiden had no idea that Mr. Wiles had come to the event specifically because of him. In fact, Aiden had yet to arrive. At this moment, just as the competition was about to begin, Aiden was still at the midnight snack corner discussing business. That day the owner of a famous local catering business had paid him a visit. He wanted to buy the distribution rights to three of Midnight Snack Corner's products, and he was willing to pay a high price. If Aiden landed this business, he would be able to guarantee a long-term source of revenue for the restaurant. So, even though he didn't have much time, he decided to quickly negotiate a favorable contract. Once business was settled, Aiden looked at the clock on the wall and his heart sunk. It was already seven o'clock! He rushed out onto East Street, grabbed a taxi, and hurried to the school. 